This here is the story of how Gulliver arrived in Lilliput. <laughs> Everyone in Lilliput was lost in a world of his or her own. There were elections and parties, cricket and jamborees with conch shells blown. Suddenly, there was a whisper afoot and galore that a guy called Gulliver has suddenly washed up ashore. This Gulliver and his girth, the Lilliputians haven't known before. The Lilliputians have in a stroke been shown their size. It's true. Unless faced with a mammoth, it's tough to realize. The melee is on and everyone is frantic. With bamboos that to Gulliver look like matchsticks, he's being pinned down and this isn't even an antic. There's now a stampede everywhere. Everyone is running in scare. No one anywhere is now looking anymore for the mayor. While I'm only an onlooker and a narrator here. The world in Lilliput before Gulliver was divided too. Between the prophet and prophet. Which is an old story and not new. The priest and the highest coexist. They compensate and pay each other a bit. The liar bribes with a prayer, the priest with forgiveness bear. Of course, there is money involved. But that's to pay for the soul at the laundromat, which is the house of God old. The gang and the Lord, they both need each other. So one would poke and draw some blood, while the cleric is at hand to stitch the conscience back instead. One prays and the other would pray. And the game is cast and set each day. In Lilliput too, prayers became a ritual mayor and prophet became prophecy here. While God remained in churches and temples mostly alone, the world came by once in a while to rub their noses or kiss the cold stone. Where in all this here? Then was there a space for Gulliver to wash up? So they tried driving him away with the drums and sharp clank. When that didn't work and the hopes just about sank. Last evening, as I sat in my terrace sipping my wine, with the horizon ablaze in a deep orange line, the thought came to me. Think of your heart as the drum and the breathing as the bass. The two remain breathless, each other as they chase. Beyond this, if there should be one, sit down and figure out. Just how much do you need and don't for more run. It's self-hypnosis that takes over our lives that be. Let me recite to you what I feel and what I see. Life becomes mechanical with its issues fraught. There is joy and sadness and love earned and lost. Everyone remains busy in the orbit of their belief as it ought. Everyone justifies whatever they do in their own thought. Then comes disruption. And Gulliver comes driving on the wrong side of the road. Plans, predictability and future are short-circuited. And what was even until now becomes odd. Our lives. We live cliches and our own narrative. A cliche is a posture and a mask to where one is imperative. When one is at the task, what it takes to live life is more than in that cask. If only I knew just how much I need, I won't pay Gulliver much heed. In seeking more, I remain a pygmy and small. It is in gratitude that I rise and become tall. Just a little more, and a little more, and a little more, if that's what one wants. That's when it washes a Gulliver ashore. Yogi at Yol. 
signing off. Your one life, live it.